are we all psychic? We're souls. I believe we are a soul, a spirit, which is in essence a soul, that lovely part of us that travels across time to learn about love. And many of us before we're born, our soul is of the nature. We're healer souls. We're empath souls. We have all these psychic powers, but a lot of people who have these abilities, they get confused about them. You know, Einstein said it forever ago. We are made out of oscillating fields of light and sound. I think it's more of a matter of, do we know how to tune into it? It's shocking how much else there can be. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted to become psychic or discover your psychic abilities, then do we have the show for you. Today I'll be talking with Cindy Dale, intuitive healer, energy worker, and the author of many brilliant books and a true favorite of mine, Awaken Clairvoyant Energy. And that's just what I want to talk with her about today, about how to become psychic, open up your clairs, and see beyond the veil. So welcome back to the show, Cindy. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. I'm ready to help everybody shine in this year. Woohoo! Which begets the question before we dive into things are we all psychic? Absolutely, we are all psychic. We are born psychic because 99.999% of us is made out of, guess what, subtle or psychic energy. You know, Einstein said it forever ago we are made out of oscillating fields of light and sound. But most of those fields of light and sound are, guess what, made out of psychic energy. We're just exchanging data with the world all the time. I think it's more of a matter of do we know how to tune into it or for the good stuff or tune out of the stuff that we don't really want. So thank you. And tell me what's going on here. Jessica did an experiment last night. She did an experiment with baby Hannah who sleeps by her side in a crib. She's in her crib. She's eight months old. When we last spoke, she was, she was in belly in utero um, about to come through and it's been an amazing journey. To say she is a sensitive sleeper, you're in one end of the house, at the bottom of the house, she's at the top of the house, she's got three noise machines around her, and you crack a knuckle and forget about it. With that said, she, Jessica, last night, baby Hannah was having trouble sleeping, and she, she started singing her a lullaby, and she fell asleep, but she was singing it in her head. And we have experienced it where we've laid in bed, been awake, been awake for a while, and started to have a thought or an errant thought. And we know we have woken her up with our thoughts. We know we have woken her up with our dreams. Jessica is saying, if, you know, we want a romantic embrace at any point in the future, hopefully that's not too much to say that we're going to have to almost like be in another house. I'm not even sure that matters. She can hear us, can't she? She can hear you. And, you know, I'm going to give a little science on this. I love science. According to quantum physics, there is something called the law of entanglement, where once joined two beings, two people, two objects, two thoughts, two ducks, it doesn't make any difference what it is, right? Once they have connected, no matter where they are, so this doesn't you know, give you a lot of auspicious positivity toward your embracing, but I'm not going to go there. But, but I love this because I, I've actually <laughs> talked about this. We are and so on the same wavelength because if yeah. you take two particles, put them in, in, yes. at the other end of the universe, you ring one particle, you vibrate it, they, oh, the one on the other end is going to do the same thing with nothing apparently in between. Instantaneously, faster than the speed of light, faster than the speed of sound, which changes in different mediums and universes. Absolutely, there's an instantaneous exchange of both data or information, which is the psychic stuff you're talking about, and vibration. So energy is everything. Energy is just information that vibrates. That's all that it is. So you're talking about a little kind of radar sensitive being. She's sort of like a dolphin, it sounds like, right? Uh, You know, kind of a little musical being that anything you're thinking, she can sense the data of it, the vibration of it, and she responds automatically. That's a lot to deal with for a parent. <laughs> well, the, 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 the term, and I'm very careful about my words, so, but we'll go with it. I'm doomed. <laughs> what, you know, is there like a, I don't, I don't think there is because I know energy, you can't stop energy. And so I'm like a lead vest, a lead shield. Is there, are there things I can do? And we actually, we all experience this in households with loved ones or not so loved ones, that quantum entanglement. 
is there anything we can do to shield up or bubble up? Not so much for their energy. We'll talk about that later, but so that we're not... Okay, I'll give you another example. Before this interview, first, because I haven't done many interviews since I've been on sabbatical and I'm so excited to have you back. First, my computer says it's full. <gasps> Gasp. <laughs> Let's get that figured out. And then a cord recording uh, for sound, it went bad. Gasp. That energy goes and hits poor Jessica. Even if I don't say a word, the energy inside of me. How do we create a buffer mechanism so our energy isn't going over others first? Then we'll talk about others going over ours. Okay, that's a wonderful question. And I'm just going to also share a story that's from my youngest son when he was in his early 20s, which he still is, because I'm just going to reiterate the parenting piece. He had to pitch in front of the coaches a couple of years ago, and he's really nervous. He called me up and he said, Mom, will you hold my fear for me? I said, sure. It's a Sunday. I held the fear, but I did sneak in an emergency client for two hours who had cancer. My son texted me during those two hours, you know, near the end. He goes, what are you doing? All the terror is back. You need to pick it up again. <laughs> so, so we can order our energy, you know, and, and that has to do with what we take on from others, but also, you know, kind of like what it is that we're sending out. So the most important thing to know and to remember is that we are also a biofield. So every single little bit of electricity, EMF, sound, whether it's measurable or not measurable, most of it is not measurable, most of it is psychic or quantum, you know, is always emanating from us. There's no such thing as beginning or ending at the skin. So it's like you can set your dial inside about, you know, kind of what it is that you want to pick up on. And I work on that. I work in the very center of the heart. I call it the God spot. I don't care if people like the word God. I love it. But I, it's great because I believe in the very, very middle of that heart chakra is where we indwell our own essence, our own spirit, what, whatever you call the greater spirit. And there's actually a cell, C-E-L-L -L, of the divine in there that's unique to each of us. So I sort of set my parameters from my God spot. Like I'll go in there and tinker every so often and just say, you know, I really don't want to know what's going on in my son in baseball today. I'm like good with it. <laughs> or, you know, that friend who I know is really mad at me, she can deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to pick that up. So that's one place that I every so often kind of like very cognitively set my parameters. And I'll tell you, Michael, yeah. the other thing that works for me is I know my field is gigantic. All of ours are. They're gargantuan. Science has found an electron that's measurable, a football field away from us. And you could even think of that electron as having little ears always listening in. But the neat thing that what we can do is set up sort of like modules yeah. in our energy field to say, all right, I'm going to set up this module and program it. Sometimes I image it like a subtle energy crystal. In laboratories, scientists are growing crystals. They can program these crystals for, for basically time or space. They can grow a crystal that every hour on the hour, it emanates a certain bleep. They can also program these crystals they're growing so that if some event occurs inside or outside of wherever they're placed, there's a certain reaction. So I imagine myself setting different crystals in my field and I set them. So I can set them, for instance, if I were Jessica, I would set them that say, you know, whatever's going on with Michael's tech, I don't want to know about it. <laughs> or, you know. And usually I'm aware. It is all about awareness. And I didn't have awareness. the awareness. And I want to tell you about baby Hannah and where I do have awareness in a minute, but I didn't. And so she needs to set her, <laughs> her anti-Michael tech. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. She can set her anti-Michael tech or you can set it for anything. I teach people to do it for illnesses. Like, you know, this is not a good week to catch X, Y, Z. You know, so you literally set a little subtle crystal in your heart, in your field, you connect 
connect the two. And you just said, I'm super potentizing my immune system, sending off, say, sonic energy through the crystals, through the heart that are saying, you know, this week I'm very protected from illness, negativity, whatever it is. We have that kind of power. I think we just don't know that we have it. There is somebody recently, our animal communicator, and she says, before you go into a place, uh, I'm going to use the term a sonic boom of love. She says, put out a love bomb before you go into your Home Depot, your Lowe's, wherever, because we're doing construction on our RV at the moment because we're traveling to Florida in two weeks. And so to set love bombs, which is really what you're talking about, is setting an intention in the field before you go somewhere. Yes. And you do it from your heart. I call it the God spot, because when you're coming from that spot, it is physiological. That's the interesting part of owning that you have a cell from the universe that nobody else has. It's a molecule. It's molecular structure. It's atomic structure. Certainly it's subatomic, which is sort of everywhere at once, which doesn't always serve the purpose when you're trying to set up boundaries. Well, that also gets back to baby Hana. <laughs> That's right. Gets back to baby Hana, who's delightful and very aware. Yeah. Wait till she's, you know, 18, 14. Skip 13, 14. That's what I say when it has to do with girls. But anyway, um, yeah, so set it from your heart. And remember that what you conceive gets created and everything is made out of some atomic particles that form atomic particles that form molecules. And so we're not making up that you can create, say, for instance, subtle energy crystals. We're made out of crystalline energy as it is. That's how we're actually picking up on sound, psychic sound, and, you know, images of what's happening other places. It's because our molecules are organized like crystals. We're just great big crystals. Which gets back to uh, Dr. Emoto and water yes. molecules, which means be very careful. So the fact that I said we're doomed, I better say we're doomed and come <laughs> to it from a place of love because that affects the crystalline structure inside of us. And, you know, let me just speak to this because I get a lot of people who are very intelligent and wise going, oh my gosh, does this mean I can never have a negative thought or that my fears are going to create themselves? You know, just be really loving to yourself because love will kind of move through that and just create what really truly is loving. So you can have a bad day. I mean, there's no such thing really as a bad emotion. Uh, You can be angry. You can be sad. You know, just embrace it and say to yourself or to another, what am I to do with this? What's the message with this? So meaning anything with the prayer of love allows us to be human also. Thank you. So I'm I'm swimming yesterday and I'm in the pool, I'm swimming and there's somebody sitting on the diving board next to me or up on the the diving where you dive in for a race and working with somebody doing rehab work in that lane. And she's kind of sitting uh, cross-legged, almost in a meditation pose. And and, and, and I I turned to her as I stopped on one lap and I said, "Uh, are you holding space? (laughs) <laughs> and she said, what does that mean? I said, well, it's, it, you could t- use it as a meditation term or an energy term that you are sitting like mountain, you are watching your thoughts, and you are holding space for everybody around you, and it makes people feel safer and more secure, which is what I do with baby Hana when she's up in the middle of the night and Jessica is trying to feed her and she's a hot, bothered mess, is I will sit at the end of the bed and hold space. It's one of the more beautiful concepts, isn't it, from ancient times and, you know, into kind of the understanding of modern mindfulness is that holding space. I think of it as as holding the quietness of love. It's like praying without having to fold your hands. And, you know, we do exist in this sort of bubbly time space continuum, which has its own set of understandings. There's so many different theories. The one I really like about time and space is called loop quantum gravity. And, I, you know, just picture a bunch of igloos. I know it's going to sound goofy until we do it. I like picture. It. I know it's really great. Picture a whole bunch of igloos and they're connected with rods. That's how some scientists are envisioning time and space. The igloos are space or events. The rods are time. So I think literally Michael, when you're talking about holding space, it's like be in that igloo, Mm -hmm. you're interconnected and whatever you're sending out of your little igloo, love, 
peace, hope is automatically transmitted to others because full circle, there's entanglement, which is a beautiful thing. It means we're connected, means we're in oneness. And what we're sending out, we're inviting others to participate in. Now, they don't have to, <laughs> right? It begets the question, and then let's dive into some some people's or, or, or waking up people's psychic powers. <laughs> this word inviting, I can hear because everybody who's listening is an empath. We're energetically sensitive and we're going, Michael, that's great that you're holding space. Please tell me how to protect my space. <laughs> Are we inviting in other people's energies and what do we do about that? <laughs> Well, a lot of times we are, <laughs> and I, I'm an empath also. I was that kid who, when I was growing up, nobody, well, my two sisters wouldn't sleep with me because I had so many allergies. I was up all the time. When I started therapy at 18, 19, mm -hmm. I had a therapist say, you're not only codependent, OCD, anorexic, blah, 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 you know, all the stuff that you get insurance payments for, but you're also psychic. And she said, Maybe you're holding energy that's not yours and you should return it. Now, I do not recommend this. Do not do this. OK, I said, OK, whatever's not mine. Goodbye. All my allergies disappeared, but one and they appeared in my family members. I can go on and on about how much I have held over my lifetime. All right. We don't really want to send it back to somebody and make them suffer, however. But it's all it's got to do with that inner programming. Here, let me tell you where I think it starts. We're souls. I believe we are a soul, a spirit, which is an essence, a soul, that lovely part of us that travels across time to learn about love and and crashes and dives, you know, every so often. And many of us, I believe, before we're born, our soul is of the nature. We're healer souls. Mm -hmm. We're empath souls. We're shaman souls. We have all these psychic powers, but we believe somehow that we sat down with God or spirit and we think God said, do for others for them. <laughs> right? That, that conversation didn't take place. I can guarantee it. <laughs> but we may have been convinced of it along the line. And if no other time, then right before here's baby conception, burst up preconception, we're coming in and here's the ancestors, right? Um, here's the mom line. Here's the dad line. And they're going, it'd be awfully convenient if you did all this for us. And so we said, sure. And that's actually the setup to keep absorbing. We change that agreement. We don't have to change the agreement with anybody else but ourselves. We decide, we sit with it for a couple minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, a day, whatever it takes, and just say, that's not useful for me. And it's not serving others. I'm only going to let in what supports who I really am. And my field really then can keep out whatever doesn't support who I really am and my true self. Well, I love it. And, and I believe that a, a higher vibration energy certainly trumps a lower vibration energy any day of the week. The trick is it's an inside job. We've heard that so many times. It's such a cliche. But if you yeah. work on your internal energy and get yourself happy, what you exude, what you emanate, where you vibrate at shifts the energy of everyone around you much more than if you try to please this person and that person and the other thing and the other thing and the other thing, which brings your energy down through the floor. And there's a different type of bomb going off than a love bomb. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it is an internal job. And I would say also think about the whole body, not just the upper body, which is more chakra wise, the energy centers we're working with. You know, the top chakras tend to be really high frequency, uh, kind of about spirit stuff. The middle chakras in the torso are more about psychology of self. The bottom chakras are about the density of self, the physical, the emotional. And you're really saying you want that sort of real self or high frequency, the, you know, kind of that love in all of your chakras. Because what people tend to forget is kind of the real stuff that happens in life, that's being programmed down in the lower chakras. And, you know, we like to, we like to think just, Oh, I don't know. Let's just like hum really, you know, happy music. You want to hum the happy music down in the lower part. So the body and emotions are kept safe too. 
I need to go there and forgive me, everybody. We are, I promise, going to dive into everything psychic. But this is important. And this we how, are this getting is, there, though. Yes. This is about psychic. It really it, is. And, and Rue has just woken up. So first I heard the sound machines go down upstairs, which means baby Hannah's awake. Rue has now started a crowing, which means baby Hannah alert. And so we may get him up in a minute because he's always keeping an eye on her. And they have such a strong psychic connection. Uh-huh. Baby Hannah has had... Uh, digestion issues for a few months that I think we've finally gotten at the root at. But now if we go and play the chakra game here, really, to me, she is one high spiritual flyer that's come here to do monumental, and, and there's no pressure. There's no pressure to do anything. Go play, be baby Hannah. That's your, but, but I know it. And I know that she's come into this body and it's been a WTF for her. I mean, being born, she was born preemie. She lost her sister in utero. She had heart surgery on birth and she was in the, the, the NICU for two and a half or three weeks. It's been, she's super healthy now. She went from 0.2 percentile in, in size to now 90th percentile. Um, she is, but the stomach, now we're talking about lower level chakras. I think it's maybe her having been resistant to being in the body. I'm going, what's going on here? It is. And I mean, it's really good. And this is about psychic because you can't really do psychic well unless you're in your body. And that typically involves working through the pain of what we've gone through. And it doesn't matter if you're eight months old, if you're 80 years old, if you're 18, 28, we've all had trauma. All of us, we carry trauma in. We have intergenerational trauma. And, you know, life is hard. Life is tough. She came in and that poor little body has already gone through a lot. So, of course, there's the soul is going, okay, maybe I only want to be here, but not here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe I want to feel this, but not this. <laughs> so, there's for any soul, there's sort of over time this. And, and that's kind of what childhood is about, to be honest, even from a chakra development, you know, sort of way of understanding the chakras really open over 21 years, one at a time in a really strong way. And so we're constantly, here's our word again, invited to inhabit the body a chakra at a time, a little at a time to get used to being here, to be okay with it, to work through what we've brought in, what we've inherited, you know, and to say, I'm good here. I can be fully here. So at eight, you know, at eight months, she's actually moving into what I call the second chakra, which is the abdomen, which is the root of digestion too. So this is a perfect time for her to kind of say, I can be in my gut. You know, I can be in feeling, I can be in emotion, I can be in my immune system. I can really kind of inhabit this beautiful world of creativity and joy and expression because that's what the chakra uh, that is the second one in the abdomen is. Is it speaking to her? Is it hands-on healing? What can we do to facilitate the grounding in there and the opening up? I would do hands-on. I would do the hands-on laughing, like while you're laughing, holding her belly. And, you know, that kind of preconception trauma, that's what she went through. Um, There's two places to work with preconception trauma, in the utero trauma, post-birth trauma. And and I'm kind of speaking to all of us, to be honest, because most of us have that some kind of a challenge. Maybe mom didn't want us. That wasn't the case with you all. Um, Or we had a disappeared twin, which is not uncommon either, you know, or the ancestors, you know, kind of like suck one on us or whatever. So that tends to be what we call the first chakra, which is in the coccyx, the adrenals. um, And that's active preconception to six months of age. That's where most people's trauma actually sits. So we want to do some hands-on in there. It's pre-verbal, you know, add blessings into that part of the body. And this is going to sound strange, but there isn't traditional Chinese medicine. Between the two kidneys, there's what's called the Ming Men doorway, M-I-N-G-M-E-N. It's open in preconception. Ancestor energy comes in and we inherit traumas too, that, you know, just kind of came in through our ancestry. So I would also breathe. She's little. You can still do hands-on between those kidneys, breathe love in through there, 
anybody, any of us as adults could just image that part of our body. What I really like doing is imagining that instead of bringing in old trauma from preconception or the womb, et cetera, I'm substituting that for streams of love. So it's a beautiful visualization. It's really easy to do. And, you know, I do it frequently on myself. I can feel it now, just kind of bringing beautiful streams of love in through me. And my body automatically calms down. I feel like I rest further into my legs, into my hips. So that's a great exercise for any of us that you can, you know, hold for your baby too. Thank you. Thank you. And I hear her upstairs and I'm hoping she will come down and make a cameo before we're done. We, we shall see. Stay tuned, everyone. I am not making promises, Woo-hoo. but I definitely hear her, hear her playing up there. All right. Let's dive into psychic powers for everyone. The first question that gets to be asked is, to me, there is more energy either more energy about because uh, (laughs) we're in an accelerator to me right now, or the veil is getting thinner because we're an accelerator right now. Is this a time where we're more able to access our psychic powers because perhaps even for the development of humanity, it's necessary? Absolutely. We have accelerated. And you could come at that from many different ways. Literally, literally time is speeding up. I mean, the you know, the aspect of the universe we know best how to measure is speeding up. (laughs) We're moving away from the Big Bang, getting faster and faster. So we're literally accelerating. All right. There's also more people on this planet than at any time we've ever known that there have been. I don't know about ancient history. Um, And so when you have that many fields of energy, it's like percolating. It's like, you know, putting a lot of bubbles in the soup, right? Everything's more powerful. Uh, A couple, three years ago, uh, the American government came out and revealed, hey, we've known for a long time that there are aliens. And I'm not talking about just this beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. We're a focus right now in the universe. It's like we're being invited to pick it up. We're being invited to move from, okay, let's sit around and kill each other with spears, then nukes, you know, to, you know, maybe we can move into the type of love that's being mirrored to us, I believe, by other civilizations, seen and unseen, by guides, by beings who are helping us, by all the guides all of us have, and by the children. There is definitely a different type or brand of soul. I I don't really know the age. I would say it's probably 21 on down that are sort of spirit children. They're rainbow children. They're very psychic. They're very sensitive. And they're saying, let's all use these abilities because we need them in order to ricochet love around, you know, rather than bullets. I, I'm going to give you a cool story from a couple of years ago. I had a mom bring her I think he was 12, her 12 year old son. And she's sitting next to him. He won't talk. He's a nerd. He's a lovely nerd. You know, he's got glasses. He's skinny. His hair I sticks love him up. Already. <laughs> <laughs> I love him too. I was a nerd, actually. I had black Catwoman glasses. He had black glasses. And too. just look at me. I mean, hello. <laughs> and you got him yellow, though. <laughs> and he would not talk. She said, Tell her what you want to ask about. And he goes, No. So I said, is it okay if I just see what your guys want to tell me? And he goes, sure. And I go, there's this really interesting blue skinned girl with you. And I described her. I said, she comes to the movies with you. She sits next to you and she talks to you all the time. He looked at his mother and he said, you told her. She goes, I did not say a thing. And he goes, well, who is she? And I said, and the image I got was of my wonderful nerd boy with the blue girl, with all these other young people in a circle holding hands. They had many different appearances, many different looks here, there, and everywhere. In the middle of them was like this white fire. And they were all growing this white fire. You can only know it spiritually. You have to, you have to know it exists psychically if you're going to make any use of it. And I said, you're all, you're all opening up this beautiful form of whatever you want to call it, oneness, divinity, love. And he looked at me and he says, so what does that mean for who I am? And I just said, oh, you're an X-man. 
cool. <laughs> I don't care what age we are. We have X-Men potential inside of us. Maybe that'll be the new title of the show, How to Become an X-Man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> On that note, then, where do we begin with someone who says, I want to discover, I want to start using my psychic powers, I want to become an X-Man? I started with this, everything's energy, information that vibrates or moves, 99.999% of it is psychic. Mm-hmm. So you already are being psychic. You're already, at, you're just not really focusing it. The easiest way to activate, to use, to employ, to interpret, to send psychic information is to use the chakras as your steering wheel. I I love structure. I actually like science and structure. And I work with 12 chakras. You don't have to work with 12 chakras, but they're really pretty cool, to be honest. Every single one of your chakras, the seven in the spine, I also have, since I was a kid, perceived five sort of around the body are exist on a bandwidth of data or frequency. So every chakra has its own psychic ability. Because of who we are, we may have one or two or all of these chakras that are stronger than others. So it's very helpful to get a sense of what you're going to develop or what's going to be easiest for you to develop based on those strengths. So some people don't know they're psychic because they're really strong in the first chakra, which we've talked about down in the hips. It's red. It's physical. But if you're the person who's sitting there and you know what pain, physical pain somebody's going through, or you go to a movie and Something's happening with the hero on the screen. They're getting knived and you feel it. You know what? That's a power. That's a psychic power. So, but it also means you don't want to just be a victim of it and just feel everybody's, you know, problems and physical illnesses or even take them on. It's actually also a gift of manifesting. So through that energy center, you can manifest in the physical realm. Usually, I organize the psychic gifts into four categories. It's the easiest way to get at them. So there's physical empathy chakra powers, which are about sensing in the body or or even impacting other people's physical bodies, right? So it can go all the way to levitation. I used to do that as a kid. It can also wait, be wait, emotional. Wait, pause, pause, oh, pause. Okay, okay, okay. You I can't, like this and, one. and I know Wayne Dyer talked about <laughs> this as well. You you can't go past <laughs> levitation without giving me more. I could levitate as a kid. I honestly could. I am very first chakra, by the way. That's one of my X Men superpowers. And when I had other people around, I would do like a parlor trick for at least 10 years. Other kids, my parents didn't believe me. I would say, I can levitate. And I would literally go off the ground. I could also levitate other people because that's the first chakra. It's really physical, right? And so, I mean, some of it is the old kid thing we did, light as a feather, stiff as a board. But anytime I was in the group with somebody else, we'd put a couple fingers underneath like one of the kids and lift them up. That's a first chakra power, to be really honest. That is how the pyramids were built. May may I just say that? (laughs) So I know it's pretty cool. So we do have these physical, empathic or emotional powers. There's also spiritual psychism. Mm -hmm. That's a little harder for people to believe because it's like being conscious. It's about being aware. It's about getting a sense of who's telling the truth or not, or being able to bring through messaging or knowledge or conscientiousness. Like this is supposed to happen. This is not supposed to happen. So it's a very strong sense of abilities. Uh, Sometimes it can involve actually commanding supernatural powers or natural forces. Um, But a lot of people who have these abilities, Michael, they they sort of, they get confused about them. Like, how am I going to prove I know what God's thinking? Well, you just know. (laughs) So go ahead with it. Um, Then we have clear audience Mm -hmm. or verbal, which is much richer than people think. It's not just being able to hear dead people talking, right? Um, It's 
it's maybe maybe being able to hear what the animals are saying uh, or get songs from, you know, from a song, you get a message or you do hear words in your head that are from visible or invisible beings. But it's a verbal. It's a way of being verbal. And my particular favorite is clairvoyance, which is imaging or pictures, which, again, is a little richer than people know. Some people don't think they're clairvoyant because they can't just necessarily close their eyes and get a picture in their head. But you can teach yourself clairvoyance. Sometimes it involves just trusting when your eye catches on something in the environment, you pay attention to it. Or you see an animal or a bird in the environment, there's a message. A lot of people get their clairvoyance when they're sleeping. They get dreams. You just have to believe them and trust them. Or you get videos in your head. I do tons and tons of clairvoyance. It's kind of my favorite because I love pictures. I like the movies. I like pictures. (laughs) And and universe tends to speak to me in in popular culture. And and I guess usually in popular culture from my, my days growing up. So it will throw a song at me that's important. And I better pay attention to the words. Or it'll throw a clip of a movie at me (laughs) and I'll see the clip and I'll go, isn't that cool? And we get to, the more that we, it was something you brought up a minute ago, the more we practice with this, the more it comes to us, the more we understand it, the more we get it, isn't it? Totally. You've got to just open up and you know, the key is not to be scared of it, be excited by it. Go, I wonder what I'm going to be shown today. A few years ago, about three years ago, my mother died. She had a good death. She had a very good death and I was with her as was my older son. We had our challenges, but we both stuck in there. All right. So we had a really good relationship when she died. The next day, I'm I'm in my basement. You probably don't know that, but I'm in my basement. I was sitting in my basement teaching a class and behind me, where I have lots and lots of books, I heard noises. The dogs were not in there. During break, I went in there. Two books had fallen off the bookshelf. It was my mother. One was Edgar Casey's Life After Life. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> I didn't even know I had it. And another was a book I, honest to God, didn't know I owned. It was like a comedy book. And I don't buy comedy books. It was like, well, that was interesting, but I don't want to do it again. That was the title. <laughs> so it's an exciting, I mean, if we really believe in oneness, right? And we're part of nature. And nature is part of us. And so is the whole cosmos, visible and invisible. Then you can be psychic in many different ways, including like you're saying through popular culture. In fact, my last client I worked with before we started talking, uh, we did a three hour session, which is long, but it was really fun because the guides kept giving messages via books and movies that I had read. So I was like, I mean, you know, remember that? Joseph in the amazing Technicolor dream coat. We got analogies out of there. We got analogies out of fairy tales. And that that's sort of her language. It was kind of a form of Claire audience. I could bring in a story and she could sit and it would heal. She would heal. So we really do have to have this sort of sense of adventure, I think about our psychic communications. So I want, to lo- I want to talk about our internal eye or eyes in a minute. I want to talk about how to open some of these things up. But before that, mm-hmm. as you said, you know, these popular culture references, all of a sudden Madonna started singing, we are living in a material world and I am a material girl. <laughs> what does that mean to you? <laughs> so, okay, well, I think that's a positive. <laughs> and I've been emphasizing it. Density is not bad. I have my lipstick here, by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Density. Density is not worse than non-density, all right? So getting a sign from that which is material is a lovely thing. And needing to get a sign about that which matters most to you, which might be something like money, housing, clothing, lipstick, (laughs) whatever it is, go for it. You know, I think sometimes in the spiritual market, and sometimes it is a market, it's an industry. Um, you know, sometimes we think it all has to be like woo woo, or I just want to talk to the Hathors, or I just want to talk to uh, Jesus from 2000 years ago. And it's sort of like, I'll, I'll, I say it this way. There's a client I work with. She loves uh, getting online with me because I channel dead lawyers for her. 
because she's going through a divorce and she needs that type of advice. Now, I I don't pretend to know the law, but they have given her tips that have literally saved her from bankruptcy while she's going through a divorce. So you can get signs of and be psychic around what really matters to you, which could be, how do I become a love more loving being, you know, an X-Men or I got to pay my bills tomorrow. You know, how do I do that? So thank you. And so last night I went to bed and I don't know what happened. I think Jessica was up at some point um, having to do with the baby and then she was back asleep. And I wear a, it's called a mindfold, a blindfold that blocks out all, oh, yeah. all visible light. And actually you can look up kids who like ride their bicycles or go rollerblading with these things on. It's amazing. Their skills. Uh, they're trained in the UK. Now I think there may be some kids trained in Connecticut who can see with these mindfold, they can go shopping at the grocery store and pick out a fruit loops or something. I wear this. There's no light coming through. And I saw that the router was on in the next room and I could see the lights flashing and I could see the mantle and I'm staring at it for a minute and I go, you know, you're awake right now. The mindfold is on. You can't see a single thing, but you're seeing it. And I got up this morning and Jessica's like, I'm sorry, I had to turn the router on in the middle of the night. So this stuff is so cool. And I know I'm seeing with, we'll call it the internal eye. What am I doing and how do we all start to open this up? Absolutely. So there's many different chakras that you can use to see with your internal eye. But what you were using and what most of us typically use, they call it the third eye that's been around forever, the oracle eye. It's it's also called the sixth chakra. It's in the brow. And it is the center of your visual perceptivity in the physical body. And it is the psychic eye. I mean, when, you know, you even can look at lizards and they have this extra eye <laughs> inside of them that can gauge different different sorts of energies and frequencies and barometric pressure, pressures, et cetera. Well, we have something like that that we can cultivate that is in what's sometimes called a crystal cave. So sometimes it occurs between the sixth chakra and the seventh or the pituitary gland and the pineal gland. We're sort of using both. So when we're being classically clairvoyant, we're going to be seeing images that are colorful. All right. And you know how you teach yourself if you don't think you do it, which you do do, and everybody gets colored dreams, by the way, whether you remember them or not, you can start by just, and do it with me right now. This Anybody can start to develop this. So by taking a couple deep breaths, being in your heart, asking spirit, asking guidance, your own spirit even, to open up your third eye. Don't argue. Don't tell them how to do it. You're just going to open it. Be in the very center of it. And now I want you to image an orange. Just picture an orange. You can picture an orange, can't you? That's clairvoyance. <laughs> so now some people see that orange and they don't see a color on it. So no matter what color you see or don't see, imagine that you're coloring that orange purple. That's also clairvoyance, where we can actually create images that can be useful as well. All right. Now, you want to receive a clairvoyant image. You just created one. Sort of clear the deck. Just imagine you're erasing the orange. You might see a white screen, a black screen. Think about a topic that's important or a question. Breathe deep and ask guidance to give a single image in that mind's eye and trust it. It may not make sense. It may be a shape, a color, a whole, you know, nine yards, a memory, but you trust it. And then you just ask for another one or another one. And if you want to go a step further, whatever that image is, we're going to kind of bring our Claire audience or verbal capability into this. Ask your own spirit or the guides to write a one word caption under the picture. A one word 
caption that's going to summarize what you're receiving. And that's the beginning of using the clairvoyance. You may know, being psychic, what I'm about <laughs> to ask. <laughs> how do we know we're not making, making it, up? it up? That's right. So I have two answers. Okay. One is, this is what I say to myself, especially when I'm working with clients or I'm getting messages that, that are like, what? Like, I just say, would I even make it up? I say that to myself all the time. Would I really make this up? <laughs> would, I, would I come up with this in my logical, you know, kind of intelligent brain? Would I make something like this up? Well, of course not. All right. The second answer I have to that is um, just believe that you're not and see where that takes you. You know, sometimes you just have to override doubt. Self-doubt isn't a bad thing. It's kind of what our brain puts in place to make sure, you know, that we're double checking something. So there's a story in the Bible, for instance, of a, of a, um, a prophet. His name was Gideon. Mm -hmm. And he saw a burning bush also. We know Moses saw the, you know, a burning bush and, you know, and he went with what the burning bush said. Like he just said, okay, fine. I'm going to do what you're saying. Gideon was not so gullible. Gideon saw this and, you burning know, I'm bush. Picture this UFO above <laughs> Moses <laughs> yeah, and it's right. broadcasting a message. It's got a little laser <laughs> right. and he wouldn't know <laughs> any <right>. different. <laughs> no, no, of course he wouldn't. We're just going to call it what we know to call it. But Gideon was like, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. So three times he tested what the burning bush was showing him three times. He said, prove it, prove it to me. So, I mean, just ask to get it a different way. You can also say, you know, if this is true, I want to get another sign over the next day or three days that this is true. So it's okay to ask for signs because, you know, you are bringing up an important point, Michael, that sometimes people do create things that aren't necessarily real or they participate in something that isn't good for them. So for instance, I've worked with a client who, um, well, I, mean, I can think this is an adult show. I can say this, um, participates in astral sex with a man she met five years ago. All right. It's not good for her. She, he doesn't call her. She doesn't call him. They haven't seen each other in five years. It doesn't mean it's not real, but it's not useful. <laughs> it's keeping her from meeting other people, making friends, um, maybe dealing with some trauma in her life. So that's another piece to add. If something that you're engaging it, we really do need to, you know, kind of, oh, kind of monitor with our heart. Is this good for me or not? If we hear a voice every night for three hours and it goes on and on and it's waking us up and it's giving us drivel that's not useful, this is why we talked about boundaries in the beginning of our time together. We get to say no. Like, I, I only want to receive, you know, something that's really supporting me. Well, this is interesting because I, I don't remember the timing of it. If we discussed it in our last show together, if it is something that took place after that, uh, Russia and the Ukraine, when that, that event started, now I am of ancestry of both Russian Jew and Ukrainian oh, Jew. Beautiful. And I had uh, dreams <laughs> before it took place and, and knew it was coming. And, and I'm not one who's like following this stuff, but I knew it was coming. But it gets to the concept of mass consciousness and a lot of the dreams that we're all experiencing. It, I think for most people, we could admit our dreams are not all uh, puppies and roses at the moment. No, they're not. Yeah. Yeah. It's really important because I also, I was actually checking in for a client before Russia bombed the Ukraine and it hadn't been on the radar at that point. She said, what's going to happen in the next year? And I saw Russia bombing Ukraine. And I saw a lot of stuff about Putin and him talking to what he thought were deceased leaders from Russia, telling him to put together the motherland. So and that he was ill. I mean, I saw stuff that wasn't on anybody's radar. So there is a mass consciousness. And often because of our soul 
or because of our uh, ethnicity or our background or our love for this world, we can pick up on these things. Um, it can be startling. Some people only pick up on what's really hard or violent or challenging, and then they don't want their gifts. They don't want to use them. Um, so we're back to a certain amount of control. We don't have full control because we're in a oneness also. So what I suggest people do is they go back into their heart and they decide, here's what I'm open to. Here's what I'm not. Like my own personal rule is I want to receive information or messages that are useful for me, that's important for my kids, or if there's something I can do about it, you know, something I need to know or something that I can do. But remember the physical heart, also has the strongest sound and light field of any organ in the body. So if you hold that truth and you make that decision, not just intention, you make it a decision inside of you and you feel and see yourself like whoosh, releasing that all the way through your energy field, that will become your predominant rule. Um, And let's say something does sneak in. I had a client yesterday who said, I was hit with a couple just feelings of fear yesterday, but I don't think it's mine. I don't think it's about my family. I said, if that leaks through, if there's something that you're picking up on, but you really can't get what, um, just ask for guidance to come and hold prayers and deliver the prayers to those who need them or who are going to need them. So, Everything really is made out of energy, and most of it is subtle or spiritual. So we impact even sending a good thought. Fascinating. Where do, so we're opening up our eye, we're, we're setting our, really, this is about boundaries. At the same time you're opening, you're closing, in a sense. You're setting that yeah. intention. What is one more key piece we can begin to play with to open things up. And and I'm going to caveat that. So forgive me, I try not to ask two questions at the same time. Is there any danger in opening things up? Yes, there is. There can be danger. And you don't want to just open up in that sort of naive way. (laughs) Just saying (laughs) this, like, give it to me. <laughs> oh man, like, I was the, the council of elders and me before I came down, as far as I understand, I said, give me the works. And they're like, yeah. no, you can't handle it. And I'm like, you don't give it to it. me. <laughs> you don't want it. Cancel clear you, release. <laughs> yeah. You don't want all of that. I mean, sometimes I meet young people. I'll give an example. I'm working with a family with a 13 year old who is really open and he sees devils, demons, angels, spirits. He can't, he wasn't, when I started working with him, he wasn't able to study at school. He couldn't make friends. He could see somebody and just see a past life. I mean, it's really good to be in the here and now. (laughs) It really is. So I I don't tend to run (laughs) pell-mell into anything. I'm Norwegian. We're very slow and steady, but that's not all bad either. It's sort of like, let me expand one circle, then I'll expand the next, then I'll go the next. And because it's like driving, then you can adjust as you go. So as you open to more and more, play with it, practice with it. And you can say to your own inner spirit or helping spirits, okay, you can turn the dimmer switch up a little bit more because it's shocking how much else there can be. I mean, most things are invisible. You don't, you don't need to see all that. You just don't. You, you want what's going to be useful for you or your loved ones. Then on that note, what is a second tool we can use to begin opening things up? It sounds like part of it is setting the intention. Part of it is playing with that, that imaging and getting more comfortable with that. For instance, the clairvoyant side. What is another piece that we could do? Right. Well, I think the biggest challenge for most people is their clear empathy, to be honest. So the pictures are glamorous. Getting words is super cool and sexy. But And most of the data most of us get is more empathic. It's more physical, emotional. We feel feelings. Are they ours or not? Uh, you know, we get awarenesses. Of maybe that's not supposed to happen. Or maybe I should drive a different way to work to get today or whatever it is. So really, honestly, it's ground your empathy. 
ground the knowing, ground your physicality. And so I still set intention. And what I do when I get like a pain or a feeling or, you know, I don't really know what's going on. I take a few deep breaths. I do stay in my heart and I feel my feet. (laughs) I I love it. My feet. I like my feet. (laughs) Okay. I do the feet. And my feet are barefoot for interviews. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason. Yeah. You're earthing. You're being in your feet. Right. And then for me, I have a couple questions I might ask. I might say, is what I'm picking up on mine or somebody else's? Mm -hmm. You know, is this for me or somebody else? So you may want to qualify a little bit. And then if you get the feeling or the sense that it's your own, and sometimes you'll get a picture to answer that or a word, but the other response your body can give you is if it's for you, what you're tuning into, if it's for you, right, your energy will feel like it's floating up. You'll get a sense of up movement. If it's not good for you or not yours, you'll kind of get a lowering of the boom in the body. And then you just release it and let go. But if you get a sense of upward movement, then you can just keep going. What do I need to know? Can this be turned into an image I can see? Can this be turned into a word I can hear? So you can turn empathic messages. They might be from your own body or from outside of you that are good for you to get into images or words if you slow down and take your time and you stick with your feet. This is fascinating. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is you can, in a sense, tune the dial. Well, I'm picturing an old school, I don't know if it's an amp or something by a TV, where you choose, do I want it to come through the CD player, the, uh, the... I don't even know what you call a turnstile anymore, turntable. Oh, <laughs> yeah, know? a turntable, right, right. What, what is yeah. the modality you wish it to come yeah. through? It's an old-fashioned radio. When I was growing up, I had my grandpa's radio, right, that you moved it up to dial like this to see what could come in. Well, you had AM, You're, FM, shortwave one, exactly. shortwave two. You had... You're in charge of that. You can do it. You can certainly ask for guidance and for help. But the more you do it for yourself, the more comfortable you are and the quicker it goes, too. Is there a reason that some people get are more uh, clairaudient or clairvoyant or a- empathic? I think it has to do with our soul. And at least on a, a in a certain time frame, what it is that we're doing in our lives, like what's our purpose for right now, to be honest. So um, like right now, I work with a lot of clients. It's easiest for me to do that visually. So I get lots and lots of pictures. All right. Because that's part of my sole purpose is to enable people by getting images of past, present, potential future. Um, now, when I'm in my everyday life, I'm very grounded. I do. I'm very busy. I go to lots of baseball. I, I'm interacting with my kids all the time and my dogs. I'm more empathic in my everyday life. I get gut senses, you know, or physical knowings about things. And I, fo- I follow them. Um, there was a stage in my work when I was more clairaudient. I got a lot more words. When I sit down to write a book, I'm much more clairaudient. So the gifts will mix up depending on what you're doing. And depending on your calling or purpose at a certain time, you know, you may get a certain gift. For instance, my um, baseball playing son, three, four years ago, he had me tune into which chakra very and psychic gift was strongest for him. And it was certainly the body and the emotions. Makes sense, right? Physical and body. Um, And he goes, well, mom, is that all I'm going to ever have? (laughs) It's like, I don't want to just do body my whole life. I said, no, no, no. At a certain point, your verbal is going to open. And he goes, he was sitting on a bus with a bunch of his, you know, kind of teammates. He goes, oh my God, mom, my neck is, feels like it's swiveling around. This is so bizarre. And his whole back of his neck, the Claire audience space opened up and he goes, I think that gift just opened. Well, he's actually been on podcasts talking like like as a cheerleader for people working through their emotional problems in the way of being a sports person. So it opened up, which I think is where he's going, right? Is like coaching. Very cool. 
I know. So we open different gifts at different times. And can we control those gifts? So I'm I'm picturing someone, your gifts, you've just listened to this. Your gifts have just opened and now you're going to be sitting yeah. on the bleachers. With, yeah, right. with, let's be honest, uh, yeah. half of the people on the bleachers or more are going to be completely out of their minds. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They are. Dimmer switch, dimmer switch. The easiest thing to do is learn how to do at least one visual with a dimmer switch, all right? So that you can picture a dimmer switch on your body and you know how to turn it down and you know how to turn it on, right? Just do a dimmer switch. Just plant it in your system right around your heart and learn how to tune it up and down. Very good. Is there one, we're going to do some sort of a technique at the end and we're, we're, we're getting very close to that and I'm, I'm hearing baby Hana and I'm still very curious. I may actually <laughs> go sneak a, sneak a peek ooh, up there in some minute ooh, and see if she ooh. wants to say hi. Okay. Is, is there one more tool or tip that you want to share with people before we tell them how to find your beautiful work? Um, you know, this is, this is a really practical tip. A lot of, I am intuitive. I am psychic. It does not mean I always understand what's going on or what I'm getting or what I'm supposed to do with it. So you know what I do? I do what I call the three day uh, uh, vision quest. If I'm confused, I say to my guides, look, you guys are smarter than me. You're bigger than me. Get me a sign and make sure I know what it is and I'll follow it. So I would add that. Let your guides get through to you. Don't do all the work. Do we have a baby coming? Oh, I love you. I love you. Aren't you sweet? Hello, little ex-girl. Hello, little ex-girl. Aren't you sweet? What are you teaching everybody? So let me, let me open, let me make it <laughs> so you can see Cindy bigger. Oh my gosh. So, um. <laughs> oh, she's so adorable. So, oh, oh, Hold on. oh. So you know this. what? While we're here, we're just doing our last technique. We're just letting everybody open up Cindy their now? heart center, their God spot. You know, you don't have to do it for everybody, little baby Hannah, but we all get to open up our God spot from the inside to the out and let all that beautiful light come out because you're teaching us all how to be curious and loving. That's it. That's how we open up the God spot. Do you want to open up your God spot? Where, you're opening up your God spot, aren't you? Oh my gosh, I see it. I got kind of dizzy, actually. Isn't that sort of fun? Then we just live from our God spot. And it'll give us really good boundaries too, by the way. Ooh, which you're definitely going to want, particularly with the energy in the house and in the world. <laughs> yes, you are. And you can be happy, right? <laughs> Uh, we're in awe of her. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. We're on just this one. one big. We're just one big God spot. That's what we're doing, right? One big. One God big God spot of green, which is healing and love. Yeah. That's what do you right, think, baby Hannah. She says, so, I know so much more than most of us. Well, she sees she things. She does. I can see her looking at things. Tracking. You have a lot of, you got a lot of like cool spirits and fairies in that room. So, I'll tell you, little baby dragons. I think she sees little so baby dragons. So we've got a, a mirror below like a coffee machine and the love bug, our kitty, will sit up on the coffee machine uh -huh. and stare into the mirror and watch things darting to and fro. Oh, yeah. Oh, just yeah. watching oh, TV. Yeah. And that's what Hannah is doing right <laughs> that's now. That's what she's doing right now. And she's tracking a bunch she's of different things. Of Talk about clairvoyance. And they're all positive. They're all good. They're now, all happy. She is tracking a lot at this moment. Is yeah. this discussion, your presence, or anything we're doing here today? <gasps> oh, yeah. <laughs> she's saying yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's all kind of, I think she's absorbing it. And I think it's going to help her with this boundary piece too. So she feels more in touch with her spirit and her boundaries. And she can say no to that and yes to that. Is that lovely? Oh, that's a good thing. Whoa. And sleep deep. <laughs> what are you yeah. seeing, baby Hannah? And sleep deep. <laughs> We're probably opening her pineal gland just a little bit, which is really good because that'll help more sleep hormones. Where do people go, Cindy, to find your beautiful oh, work, to find out more easy. if they want to hire you the work? Easy. CindyDale.com. C-Y-N-D-I Dale.com. Really easy. Or Google Honey and Lucky on Facebook. They're all over the place. <laughs> so, I, 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 I'm, you know, if I want to be a gazillionaire, all I need to do is get Rue, get, <laughs> yeah, get the Rue show it's really true. going. <laughs> it's true. Well, Honey's helping us with this. He's like wagging his tail. 
So we're just going to take a couple deep breaths, affirm our own spirits and core essence of love, all the helping spirits seen and unseen, natural and supernatural. Connect with oneness or greater spirit. And then we're asking our guidance to just bring us into the center of our heart chakras to turn on the cell, C-E-L-L of the divine. That's right, that's physiologically in there. And open up all the light of our essence of spirit and merge it with our physical cells. And just rest in there. That's our place for rest. That's our place for being. That's our place for deciding. That's our place for manifesting. That's our place for healing. That's our place for hearing too, That's isn't it? Interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I know. I know. Isn't this amazing? That's our place. There's our God spot. Oh, that was beautiful. It's very quiet and sweet. Yeah. You are at this moment. You're watching mommy off to the side, aren't you? Ah. <gasps> You're looking all around. So she showed up at the end of a show. This is her first time during a show. Cindy. Oh, thank you. I feel so honored. She's our little ex-girl with she, our little ex-dog and all our ex-men. She is. And we're going to work on our ex-skills starting tonight at drawing that energy in even a little bit more. Yes, we are. Although all of us. Although my guess is that if we play with this more, we are going to gain skills. Uh, to be able to communicate with her super exactly. beyond words. Yeah, it's opening up. It's already opening up. So, I can feel that, Michael. And now Grandma <gasps> has snuck in. <laughs> and we she's seeing grandma. grandma here. <laughs> we love Grandma. Grandmas are great. I want to be a grandma, let me tell you that. <laughs> There's a good chance of it. <laughs> I do think so. <laughs> Look at that smile for Grandma. <laughs> Thank you, baby Hannah. <laughs> big little girl. You big light, you so, of joy. Any last words you want to share for baby I, Hannah I or for everyone? Joy. It's joy. It's joy. I see these little baby dragons like helping her with her boundaries. So I, I don't know why. It's just what I see. So, Cute okay, little baby dragons. Tell me more about baby dragons. And do I need to go out today? And do I need to go a bunch of, buy a bunch of little baby dragons and put them around the place? I would. Get, I would. <laughs> I would, All right. because I think they represent her elemental powers, right? And they're very protective. Okay. They're very protective. What do you mean by ele? Forgive me for continuing. Oh, fire, elemental. water, earth. Mm -hmm. They do the natural, and they'll help her with her body, with the digestion. Yeah. And they're very protective, and she can fly on them in her dreams, too. <laughs> See, she wants to fly in her dreams. Very, very cool. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> I think she's going to run the show from now on. She'll, she she'll just do just a telepathic. Put her in charge. Like, it's lovely. Oh, she is in charge. <laughs> oh, yeah, she is. Yeah, <laughs> there they, there they is no doubt. Yes. <laughs> so, for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying be well, have fun, get your own baby dragons, and begin riding on them as you open up your psychic powers today. <laughs> and above and beyond doo, 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 doo. all else oh there goes rue crying in the other room and now she's giggling <laughs> shine bright this has been a beautiful show do you have any la last words that you want to share with people you're going for the mic we've had you go for the mic before do you want to say it's love? It's all love. It's just love. You want more love? So here we are. We're on the mic. And what do you want to tell people? Check out the next amazing show. Join the School of Mystics. Get automatic writing. Go to dailywoohoo.com. All right. Love you guys so, so much. Keep on shining bright. And yes, go to dailywoohoo.com where you can get daily vibrational attunements. And wow. Here's the link to the next, well, that's a link to Baby Hana. Here's a link to the next amazing show. How does it get any better than this?